everyone, welcome to the Generative AI for Beginners curriculum. I am Bethany Jepchumba and I'll be taking you through lesson 15, that is retrieval, argumented generation, and vector databases. Let's get started. In this lesson, we'll cover why exactly you need RAM, why we even need to care about it, talk about the components of RAM, and we'll show you how you can be able to build a full RAG application before we conclude the session. In our scenario, we'll be using Azure OpenAI as our LLM. Then we'll be using data from the AI for Beginners curriculum, the lesson around neural network, and we'll have Azure AI Search and Azure Cosmos DB for our database and search index. Currently, our LLMs have a couple of limitations. For example, the limitation around knowledge around current events. If you go in and ask, is Queen Elizabeth II alive? The AI model will tell you, as per my last update on October 2021, yes, she was, but I do not have real time data. The other thing is around your own personal data. So you, it was trained using publicly available data. So if I want to ask what is the price of cakes from a specific store, it will tell me, I'm sorry, as an AI model, I cannot tell you the real time prices of specific stores. The other limitation is around the context provided, as well as data, the responses generated might not be rooted in fact. With these limitations in mind, we have the solution of using retrieval augmented generation. This is where you add supporting information to a prompt to give it more context and knowledge so that when you go to the LLM, it can give you responses based on the data provided. How it works is a RAG application acts whereby a user asks a question and the application queries data from a knowledge base, adding the data as well as your query to the prompt that you query to the model. Then once you get the results from the model, it's both a combination of your data as well as the user prompt a user asked. So regardless where, whether a person is asking questions around prices of items in your store or prices of personal data, for example, if you have your own data on Microsoft Word and you want transparency, retrieval augmented generation can come in and help you argument your responses with personal data and generate more, better, and succinct responses. The components of a RAG include one, a knowledge base whereby the data is stored and can be able to retrieve the data, a user query when once a user asks a question, and then the retrieval system where now you build an entire system that can be able to go in, retrieve relevant information, argument it to the prompt provided, and generate a response based on the data retrieved. In this scenario, you have heard about the knowledge base, but then how do you store your knowledge base? You use a vector database. A vector database is unique in that it can be able to store embedded vectors, not just storing documents as they are, but it also has numerical representations of your documents to be able to now interact with large language models. Once you've been able to have all these things in place, we can go ahead and create our RAG application. The first thing, of course, is ensuring we have our knowledge base ready so we can create our Azure Cosmos DB to be able to store our data. Once you have your database, the next thing is you have your data. Your data may be in long paragraphs, for example, if you have a book, and you might want to split it into short passages to be able to have the LLM easily retrieve the data, as well as reducing the cost in terms of the tokens passed to your LLMs. So the next the next thing you do once you have your data is to break it down to chunks for its re retrieval. Next thing is now embeddings. Embeddings are encoded data formats that you can be able to use as input to your data, to your application. So the next thing, once you have your chunks, is to convert the chunks to embedding. Converting the chunks to embedding enables you to, of course, also have a higher retrieval speed, as well as being able to easily find the similarities between different chunks. 
in our scenario, we'll be using the tax embedding ADA002, the second model to be able to embed our data. You can use other vector embeddings such as what to be able to do your embeddings. So you can go read on around what are the different embedding tools I can be able to use and how do I make how do I ensure it's the right one for my application. Once you have your embeddings, you now want to be able to get which are similar to the prompt provided. As we said, what you're doing is argumenting your prompt with your data. So you want to find the data that is most related to the text that you provided. So once you have your text, you will go back to your data and be able to have similarity assigned to your data, to your vectors, ensuring that you can be able to find words that are closely related in a document. We can do this, of course, by creating also a search index once been able to create your being able to figure out how similar your words are, you can go ahead and create a search index to be able to now go in and retrieve chunks that are similar. And now you can be able to go in and embed your prompt with related chunks. But then the question might be, okay, you have probably your data spread across different chunks. Probably you might have one that's very closely related, another that's not closely related. So you will want to come in again and ensure you are able to rank them in order of relevance so to be able to now get such results that are most relevant to be able to be chunked together, to be able to be retrieved together with your prompt. This ensures that the most reliable data, the most the data that is most closely related to your prompt is now ranked on top. You can also do this as well with your code by creating a rerun card, be able to now rank the chance. Okay, these are the chance closer to the question and so on and so forth. Once you've been able to go in and create your rerun card, you've been able to create a search index. You want to bring everything together into an application and get a response. So for example, in our code, the first thing is the user input. So a user might ask based on the data, what is a perception? And then we have our chatbot created. You query first the embeddings that have been created. You create an embedding of first what is a perception. Once you've been able to create your embeddings, you go in and find which in your database, which data is closely related to the embedding of the question. Once that's done, you can be able to append that to the user input. And now the question that's going into the LLM is both your question, the users, and as well as the data that you've been able to retrieve. This is just an API call to be able to now come in, use OpenAI to be able to generate responses based on your question. And from the response, you can see it gives you a response of a perception is the type of artificial intelligence neural network model, and so on and so forth. You can be able to also add other features to your application, such as, for example, can you also retrieve the document or the exact chunk whereby I can be able to find the question that has been asked, as well as the content that we've been able to add on top to now get a clear picture of what exactly, what point of your data exactly did you get the response from. And that's it. You've been able to build your own application. But then the question might be, okay, you built it, but how do you ensure that your application is actually working in the same way that you intend to work? We have three different evaluation metrics that you should look into. One is groundedness to be able to evaluate, did the response come from the documents you supplied or was it just random responses? So you should be able to go back in and check what responses did you get and how do they match with the data you provided. The other thing is relevance in terms of, we were able to rank our data in terms of the most relevant based on the similarity of the vectors. But then you also want to ensure that that was the most relevant, that the most relevant data which we use. Then the last thing is coherence. Coherence is around how fluent or how close to natural language did the text retrieve sound yet? And that's it. Of course, I will leave you as an assignment and I want you to continue run, learning about RAG, continue building on top of what you've learned. So I'll leave you with two tasks. 
first of all, the first task is, can you be able to build a front end for the application and be able to have users actually interact with your RAG application? And the next thing is, are you able to utilize a framework to recreate your application, make it more simpler, or even use other tools like, as you've seen, I've been able to create the search index from, start, from scratch. I was able to create a search index, but then we have other applications such as Azure AI Search that can be able to do all this without you being able to create from scratch. So you can also explore all those other options. And with that, thank you so much for joining in and have a good day. Bye.